Remember what a rational expression is? What do, when you think rational, what do you think? What's a rational number? Something you can write as a fraction, right? A rational number is any number that you could write as a fraction. Um, so the number three is a rational number, three over one, right? The number two-fifths is a rational number. So if you can write it as a fraction, it's rational. We are going to be taking these fraction-looking setups, right, rational expressions, and simplifying them and multiplying them. So we're going to start with a little bit of just simple thought, okay? If I have that and I said, tell me the value, is that your best answer? What is it? One half, right? So you always want to make sure that you reduce in these as far as you can go um, because that is always the best answer. The most reduced, the most simplified answer is always going to be your best answer. So just make sure that you are doing that. Um, we're going to do a quick review before we jump into the new stuff because a lot of silly little mistakes can be made if we don't cover it first. Um, so look at this first example, okay? If I told you to simplify, look at letter A and look at letter B, what do you see that's different about them? Without simplifying yet, just... Okay, one has exponents, yep. What else is different about them? Okay, one only has X's. The second one is made up of, of like binomials instead of just Right. The second one has binomials in it. The first one is monomial, right? A monomial divided by a monomial versus a binomial divided by a binomial. Um, those are expressions in B, right? We call that an expression instead of just a term. Um, those are the ones that you're going to have to be real careful with because it's so tempting to simplify those the wrong way. So let's take a look at A first and see what we'll do there. Um, and then we'll move over to the other. Okay, so how would you simplify monomials? What do you do? Divide the top and bottom by like nine. Right, you can simplify by just dividing those. Negative 27 divided by nine is a negative three, um, which essentially is dividing top and bottom by nine. Okay, so this we're done with. What do you do with those X's? It's like bring one down and then like they cancel out or something. They do, they simplify. How? Subtraction, yeah. So this is a three and a four, right? So we would go X to the three minus four. Now you might think of that like this, right, is x to the negative first power, which is one over x to the first power. I just do it this way. I think it's way easier to just think of it, I mean, we did this already, right? I go four minus three is one, and the bigger number was on bottom, so it goes on the bottom, right? Um, if you wanna think of it in terms of negatives, you go right ahead. I, I just don't, I leave it on the bottom. Um, what do you do with the y's? They won out, okay? Um, so here's the thing. As a math department, we've talked a lot about canceling out. Um, it's not, they don't cancel out. They won out, right? Because it's not like they went away. I mean, they went away. But y divided by y isn't just nothing. It's what? It's one, okay? So you're going to hear me say won out a lot in this lesson because a lot of things won out. Um, just so you're clear, when I say one out, I'm saying it became one. So it looks like it goes away, right? It's not there anymore. It's a one. Um, so the simplest version of this is negative three divided by X. Okay. Okay. Now this one, it's really tempting to look at this and go, oh, six over nine, those are both divisible by three. So I'm going to make it two X minus two and three X minus three. And then I can work from there. We can't do that, right? When it's an expression, we have to do our um, simplifying of both first. 
You cannot just simplify one piece of a binomial and not the other piece of the binomial, right? Um, so 2x minus 6 and 3x minus 9, is there anything you can simplify about that? Yeah, you can factor things out, right? So in this case, if I factor out a 2, what am I left with? X minus 3. Okay, what about on bottom? Factor out a 3, and I'm left with X minus 3. Okay, now the expression X minus 3 is holding a value. So I can 1 out those x minus 3s. x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1, okay? That means the simplest version of this is 2 over 3, okay? So you need common factors in order to be able to one out something. Um, and then just keep in mind, you can't just get rid of your x's right now. Like, I can't just go, oh, that one's out because that's an expression. That's part of that expression. You have to be able to divide it, every piece of it by x if you're going to do that. Okay, which we can't, so we don't. So don't ditch those. Questions on that? That's all review. That shouldn't be new. Hopefully that doesn't feel new. Okay, um, here's the new stuff. When you are multiplying rational expressions, um, there's three steps that you're going to go through. Okay, step one is you're going to factor out the GCF if possible. There's not always going to be a GCF, but if there is a GCF, we want it out. Okay, so factor out the GCF. Number two, you're going to look for special cases. Remember difference of two squares? Remember that? The difference of squares? That was like if I see x squared minus 36, what does that become? Yeah, x plus 6 times x minus 6. Okay, so if you see a special cases situation, typically the difference of squares, um, do that, okay? Then, once you've done those two things, then you can do the star method to finish it up. And then you'll do a lot of slashing and getting rid of things. Um, so let's look at this letter A. All right, first things first. Is there a GCF? Where? The 3. Yeah, you can factor out a 3 in your numerator. So 3 times x plus 2. Um, is there a GCF in the denominator? No. Is that difference of squares? No. So you're going to do star method. Okay. What can I multiply to get 8 that I can add to get 6? My A term is 1. Uh, what would that be? 4 and 2. So x plus 4 times x plus 2. Okay, now we're going to start slashing things away. Start wanting out, if you will. Um, what can you simplify? X plus, two. x plus 2. x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is 1. So we're left with 3 over x plus 4. Can you simplify anything there? No. So that is your answer. Isn't that fun? factoring again. It's good. Um, and if you need to, you're welcome. If you've forgotten star method, you're welcome to just set it up, right? This is our general setup. If you need a little refresher. Um, okay. Letter B. God bless. Just a, yep. Um, all right. Is there a GCF? Yes. What? No, there's not. Nothing you can factor out of all of it, right? Um, do you see a difference of squares? No. no. So we're just going to do star. So up top, I'll do this one. What can you multiply to get 25 that you can add to get negative 10? Your A's are 1. What is it? Negative 5, negative 5. Um, technically, this is a special case, but I find that most people don't use the shortcut on this version. Difference of squares is usually where the shortcut comes in. Um, but if you know, if you remember this shortcut, you're welcome to say like, oh, I can tell right now that's a X minus five squared. That's great. Um, so it's X minus five times X minus five on top. On bottom, 
you have a negative 20 and a negative 1. What can you multiply to get negative 20 that you can add to get negative 1? Negative 5, positive 4. So that's x minus 5, x plus 4. Now what? You can one out those two, right? Don't get rid of both of them because it's you're not allowed to get rid of both with only one on bottom, right? So this is what you end up with, x minus 5 over x plus 4. Okay, um, you try C and see how that goes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That one? Yeah. Give it a go on C. You got a little fancier, huh? How many of you have an answer? All right, talk me through it. What did you do first? Square. Difference of squares, right, on top. So x squared minus 16, this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square. So what does that become? x plus 4, x minus 4. OK. What about on bottom? Before star method, pull out the GCF, right? So there's a 2 times x squared plus 3x minus 4. Okay, so now it's going to be a negative 4 on top and a 3 on bottom. This is going to be a 1. Don't forget to put your 2 out in front when you write it in. Um, what can you multiply to get negative 4 that you can add to get 3? Or a negative 1. So you get x plus 4 and x minus 1. Okay, what do you do next? You want out your x plus 4s. So you have x minus 4 on top and then 2 times x minus 1 on bottom. Nothing you can want out about that, nothing you can simplify about that. So that'll be your answer. Okay. Can you like put the two into the x minus one, or would this be simple? Um, I'm not usually real picky on that. Like, if you like it better as two x minus two, I don't think I'll mark off for that. I'll have to think about that a little bit. Um, okay, these ones, three problems here. Um, you have to multiply. But you also have to state the restrictions. What is stating restrictions? Do you remember? We've done this. Your denominator can't equal zero, right? So you're trying to find a way where your denominator will not equal zero. Um, so you just have to make sure that you figure that out before you do all the simplifying and breaking down because your final answer might not have a denominator but if your starting problem does it still can't be that setup equal to zero so here's what you're going to do okay um if we start with a denominator factoring out the gcf here right 
that's going to look like that. Um, once you've done that, factored out your GCF and you have your like general starting spot, that's when you want to figure out what your restrictions would be. So in this case, we would say X cannot equal what? Negative one. You cannot put a negative one there. It's always opposite of what it's X plus one. That means a negative one would make it zero. So we know X can't equal negative one. Okay. So you want to start with that part of it figure out what X could not be. And then from there, now you can start simplifying a little bit. So I would probably, I would do this, okay? Factor out any GCFs. Do you see any other GCF? 10 up top. Um, I'm not gonna rewrite it. I'm just gonna leave it right here. So this would be 10 times X plus one, okay? Um, and now we've factored out all our GCFs. Do you see any difference of squares? No. So we can just start simplifying. Um, nothing is X squared, any of that. So we can't do star method. We're really just gonna be slashing things away. Um, so for instance, maybe I should just rewrite this so you're seeing it neatly. Um, just so you see all the pieces here. Okay, what can you want out? Five. Ashley. Uh, the five. Five over five is one. Ten over ten is one. X plus one over X plus one is one. X, right, is all you have left. So your answer is X, and X cannot equal negative one. Kind of fun, right? Once you get rid of the 10 in the bottom, it's just like nothing? Yeah, because 10 divided by 10 is 1, right? Okay, let's take a look at this one, example 4. Um, what do you see up top? Difference of, Difference of squares for both of those. So this is going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. What's this one? x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay. That's how difference of squares works, right? If we were to FOIL this, FOIL um, our two binomials here, it would become x squared minus 4. So that was just always the shortcut we used for difference of squares. Um, square root on 1's plus 1's minus. Okay. Okay. Um, on bottom, what do we got to do? Star method. This is actually another shortcut one you could do if you want, but most people do star, so we'll do star. Um, nine and six, what can you multiply to get nine that you can add to get six? Three and three. All right, so it's x plus three times x plus three takes the place of that one. Um, what is this one? What can you multiply to get four that you can add to get four? Two, two, two. two and two. So this is x plus two times x plus two in place of that one. Okay, what do we have to do at this point? Not yet. You got to state restrictions, right? Before you start getting rid of stuff, Tell us what can X not equal? So X could not be what? Negative three for either one of those. Negative two for either one of those. So it can't be negative three or negative two. Okay, don't forget that step. That's an easy one to forget. Um, now you can start wanting out, simplifying, slashing away, however you want to think of it. So up top, we have four binomials. On bottom, we have four binomials. Look at what matches up. So x plus two and x plus two. Um, there is no x minus two, so you can't get rid of that. x plus three and x plus three. So up top, you have x minus two times x minus three. And on bottom, x plus three times x plus two. Oh. Um, 
questions on that? That's your answer. There's nothing else you can simplify about that. Um, so you leave it just like that. Jada. Uh, how did we get the restrictions? Yeah. So you, you just look at your denominator, right? If you're dividing, that's what these big bars mean, we're dividing, you cannot divide by zero. And if any of these end up equaling zero, then our whole denominator will equal zero because we're multiplying and whenever you multiply by zero, you get zero, right? So it has to be that all four of these do not equal zero. Well, these two are the same. So if I plugged a negative three in there, it would equal zero. These two are the same. So if I plugged a negative two in there, it would equal zero. So I can't plug in a negative three or a negative two for my X value. Kiriana, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, okay, last one. I want you to try this one on your own. Um, give it a go, and then I will do it with you in just a couple minutes. I forgot to start recording again. Um, so 2x equals 1, right? Divide by 2. So x would be 1 half. So if it looks like this, you can't just say, oh, it's a positive 1, because you have that 2 there also. So it would be x couldn't be a 1 half if it looked like that instead. But yeah, otherwise, I mean, if it's just a binomial with X out in front, it's always the opposite of what it looks like for that setup, okay? Okay, so here's all the setup. Um, what one's out? You have an X plus three up top here and an X plus three down here. The X minus four up top here, X minus four here. So you're left with x minus 1 times x minus 1 over x plus 7 times x plus 7. Um, if you leave it like that, I, that's fine with me. If you want, you can do x minus 1 squared over x plus 7 squared. But keep in mind, you cannot simplify those x's, right? It's an expression. You cannot get rid of that expression unless the whole expression is the same. Okay, questions on that?